So today reading from Srila Prabhupada Lila or Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita. It's called Lilamrita and La Prabhupada Lila because these are pastimes that were uh, included after the finishing Lilamrita. But here in, in India it's called Lilamrita and some places it's called Lila, but it's all Lila. No. So also I wanted to say today is the Yas Puja day of His Holiness Jayapataka Maharaj. So when we speak of Srila Prabhupada Lila, uh, we are all included in Srila Prabhupada Lila and especially those devotees who are his disciples and very uh, well-known, renowned devotees who from the beginning of Krishna Consciousness Movement, they, uh, they began, they were the pioneers of Krishna Consciousness. Jai Pataka Maharaj, when he was a young brahmachari, he was so enthusiastic, he would chant very loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. No. So the devotees were complaining to Prabhupada that we can't hear our japa. No, he's too enthusiastic. So Prabhupada suggested maybe he can go to the park no, and chant. Then he went to the park, people were complaining. No. Uh, somebody's shouting in the park. No. So then he had to come back to the temple. No. So uh, this is his enthusiasm. It's always wonderful that we can remember and glorify a devotee who has given his life or lady devotees her life to spreading Krishna consciousness. Uh, and we all should realize that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela it, it didn't stop 500 years ago. It is going on and on. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving all of us the opportunity to be part of his lila. But we have to be very serious. No. No. We have to be very serious in our Krishna consciousness. To, it's not something automatic. No. It's something that you gain. Just like <clears throat> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Kirtaniya Sada Hari. You gain this opportunity by being Kirtaniya Sada Hari, always chanting the name of Krishna, 24 hours a day. Prabhupada said many times. 24 hours means that everything I do is in the service of Sri Nam. Everything I do. Even my taking rest, I'm this body belongs to Sri Nam for carrying the holy name to everywhere and I am resting it. That is my service. No. So that way we can always be part of this transcendental movement. So reading from Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita, A Visit to Boston. <clears throat> Prabhupada was well aware of the worldwide prestige of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge. Many Indians were, went there to study. It was, it was, in fact, an Indian organization that invited Prabhupada to speak. When Prabhupada arrived the, that evening, he found over a hundred people waiting in the carpeted luxurious student lounge where he was to lecture. Some students were sitting on the floor while others sat on the leather upholstered couches and chairs scattered casually throughout the room. Om Jnana Tiparandasya Ganam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Shtapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadahmahyam Tadati Swapatantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Uravani Pachadine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastyatereshatadine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vashari Gaurabhakta Vinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, the, at that time, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology was the greatest school in the whole world for technology. Now they have many IITs, uh, many institutes in India, other places, but at that time, this was the top. You know. And so Prabhupada was aware. These are, first of all, they're going to be a little puffed up. Chanmaishwara Shuta Sri Bir Manam Pumam, as Queen Kunti says, when you have some knowledge or some beauty or some wealth or good birth, you know, uh, just like we, we, society is very stratified as far as birth. People think if I'm born in this aristocratic family, I'm special. No. Prabhupada used to give the example. He said someone is riding in a Mercedes car or Rolls Royce, and someone is riding in a, well at that time, ambassador. No. But the person is the same, but because of the car. So we think that if this body was born, in a special place, you know, that I am something special. You know. Prabhupada, when he was, after his first visit to the U.S., second visit, uh, he said, these Americans, they are simply over-educated shudras. You know. The shudra was, shudra was some knowledge. But if you have some knowledge and you don't know how to use it, then you become dangerous. You know. So, and another, so Robert was aware, they, they will be very puffed up, he knew that. And we will see by the Leela that they were very puffed up. No. And so, it's mentioned here that they were, some of them were sitting on leather. No, they should know, Prabhupada mentioned afterwards, that why they are coming from India, they should know, why are you sitting on this place, this contaminated? Otherwise, they have, they're coming from India, but they have no knowledge. No. Not at this particular lecture, but in another lecture in, in one university, Srila Prabhupada saw so many Indian students, and he said, so all of you have come here to learn from them. I have come to teach them. No. Yeah. <laughs> Prabhupada, usually when it was many Indian students, Prabhupada would chastise them a little bit. Said, what are you doing? Why are you coming to take something? You have the greatest treasure. You have Sanatana Dharma. You have Krishna consciousness. No. And you're coming to learn Malecha Dharma. No. You know, sophisticated Malecha Dharma. No. No. High class Malecha Dharma. No. So, uh, when Srila Prabhupada went to Gainesville, University of Florida. This is a very big, at that time it was the biggest university in the U.S., very prestigious. So Prabhupada gave the lecture. There were many big professors. They all came to hear Prabhupada. So Prabhupada said, here we are in this remote corner of the world. No. They go, what? This is the USA. This is the most important country. This is the biggest university. And Prabhupada saying the remote, remote corner of the, because for Prabhupada, the most important place was Vrindavan. No. So here we are in some jungle. No. That's how Prabhupada saw it. Some jungle of, you know, Ndvipada Pashu. No. So this was Prabhupada's. No. He was, uh, uh, he, he would say this so many times that, that you know, people, they do not understand. You know, they do not understand that we have the greatest fortune. So Prabhupada made this point many times, you know, that how important it is to give Krishna consciousness. So we'll see that a little bit uh, farther in this, in this reading. <clears throat> Although it was time for the lecture to begin, the devotees still had still not arrived with the paraphernalia. There was no flower garland for Prabhupada. 
no painting of Krishna, and no sign with the Maha Mantra. The audience waited. No. Robert sometimes, one time he came, there was this talk show, talk show, you know, like some, someone speaking and they ask you questions. So this man was very famous for criticizing and he was ready, you know, he was ready to criticize Prabhupada, brainwashing, you know, this was very popular at that time. And so they had a little chair for Prabhupada. So devotees came in, this time they were on time. Devotees came in, took out the chair and brought a big Vyasa sign. And Prabhupada sat on the Vyasa, you know, well above this man. You know, first the man was above Prabhupada, you know, this little chair, now Prabhupada's up here. So he began to ask questions. Uh, he said, um, the man said, so why do you shave your head? Prabhupada said, oh, it is very clean. Just like your military, they also shave the head. No. And then he asked a couple more challenging questions like that. And Prabhupada answered everything so beautifully that at the end of the lecture, I mean, the end of the talk, Prabhupada was, um, <clears throat> he, he, he had impacted this man so much. He said, if you ever come back here to Atlanta, please come on my show. I will not ask any questions, you just speak. No. So this is Prabhupada's potency. Another program devotees went to, uh, of course Prabhupada didn't go, but from Prabhupada's teachings, this man was famous for trying to embarrass you, try to you know, put you down. And so devotees were debating, should I go or should I not go? Uh, yes, we should go. Prabhupada said, even if they criticize, if we say Krishna enough times, then it'll be successful. So devotees went, they're expecting all these challenging questions. And the man said, so, you are all representing A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Yes. So this Krishna Consciousness Movement is meant to bring uh, peace and prosperity and knowledge to the whole world. Yes. And so uh, that means that that is why you're distributing books everywhere. Some people may take offense to this, but these books are very important, is it not? Yes, they're all devotees. What's, he, what's happening here? Huh? And so every the, the whole thing, he said everything, devotees just said yes. Yes, no. and afterwards, so the devotees asked him, "What ha you know? What happened? You know, you always you, you're famous for you know criticizing." And he said, "I went to the University of Gainesville. Every day I took prasadam. No, I'm so grateful to the devotees. No, so how important the prasadam distribution? No, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Srila Prabhupada said, we have three angas." Distribute the holy name, distribute books, and distribute prasadam. This is our business. No. Prabhupada, sometimes devotees were, uh, they started, in the U.S., they started a political party called In God We Trust. And, you know, Prabhupada said, all right, you can do it. If you become president, then we can tell everyone to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> but they didn't. We didn't become president. But Prabhupada could see the devotees were getting a little bewildered by all these politics. And so Prabhupada said, just chant the holy name, distribute prasadam, and distribute my books. So this is our business. Prabhupada, even his, the way he managed, everything was very simple. Very straightforward, very simple. And if we keep Krishna consciousness simple, this is one of the qualities of devotees, arjavam, simplicity, no, not duplicity. Duplicity means we try to make everything very complicated and then it becomes difficult to perform. So we make everything very simple. No. Prabhupada said so many times, what is the difficulty? Simply you chant the holy name, everything will happen. No. So sometimes devotees were spaced out and Prabhupada would chastise them. You know. Especially if they, uh, they brought him late for a program. 
If it was for important audience, Prabhupada would chastise them. No. Prabhupada many times he said, a devotee is dhaka, no. devotee is expert. Not that a devo devotee thinks that uh, now I am devotee, all these things are material. Prabhupada said, nothing is material. For the Vaishnava, nothing is material. Everything is for Krishna. Everything belongs to Krishna. Therefore, there's no question of material. Material is only a conception that people have when they're in maya. They think something this is material, this is spiritual. But for the devotee, everything that apparently is material becomes spiritualized by using it in Krishna's service. In anxiety, Satsvarup asked Prabhupada, can you begin without the painting? Looking at the large momentous gathering, Prabhupada said simply, painting is not important. He sat on a plain wooden platform and since the musical instruments had not arrived, he asked one of the devotees to play the Hare Krishna album. Prabhupada sat clapping his hands in time and listening. So uh, Prabhupada is teaching the devotees. The most important thing is Shravanam. No. Uh, but one time in, in a, a, a Panda program here in Delhi, they, they, they brought the Vyasasa and everything, and Prabhupada said, where are my books? Because no. Prabhupada, especially in India, he would have his books on, all of his books on either side of the Vyasasa. He wanted to show these books are Krishna. No, it is the literary incarnation of Krishna. So Prabhupada, he wouldn't start speaking. The devotees had to go get the books and bring them to show everyone how important his books were. No. So we should always remember how important they are. Prabhupada spoke boldly, challenging the very concepts underlying MIT. Where, where in this big university, he asked, is it the department for studying the technology of the soul, for understanding that principle which distinguishes a living body from a dead body, that principle which, when pre present in the body, gives life and when absent brings death? Where is the science to study this all-important principle of life? Although scientists consider life to be merely chemicals or electric impulses, he argued, still they are unable to assemble the chemicals and produce life. Why? There is no department in this university for answering this question, and therefore people are in ignorance. They don't know the self or the next life or the purpose of human life beyond animal activities. This science, however, is taught in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so, <laughs> see, Srila Prabhupada, even though this is a very sophisticated university, Srila Prabhupada did not, uh, you know, think, well, I have to be careful. No, they may not invite me again. He was direct. Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, we must preach boldly. No. We are not afraid of anything. Of course, use some intelligence. Prabhupada sometimes, just like the next year after this, he gave a lecture in the uh, Harvard University of Divinity. And that time, he was very gentle because they received, he could see the people were asking good, nice questions. They gave him a nice reception. Not like here where they were acting so puffed up, even though this was also a very prestigious university. But they were, so Prabhupada, he gave the example that if you throw a stone in the water and another stone in the same place, that the, the waves, the ripples, will reinforce one another. But if you throw a stone here and there, then they will cancel each other. So, you know, Prabhupada gave nice examples. In this lecture, that, that they're talking about now, Prabhupada gave the example of the boatman. No. Otherwise, he said, there was some technology student. No. 
speaking of them. And he took a boat across the river. And then he told the boat story of the boatman, how this student was so puffed up because Prabhupada could see they were very puffed up. You know. So the professors were also very puffed up. So Prabhupada told that story of the boatman, how if you know Krishna consciousness, it doesn't matter if you have all this material knowledge. So we can read in the purport to the second verse of the ninth chapter, Rajavidja Rajaguyam. We can read the purport. Prabhupada says the same thing. He says, in your universities, you have so many. Uh, you're teaching so many subjects, so, so much knowledge. But where is, the, where is the science of the soul? Where are they teaching the science of the soul? The Prabhupada, uh, he speaks about this very often. Usually when everyone, he would go to un any university, he would make this point that you were teaching so many things, but where is the science of the soul? Uh, and so, uh, so here Srila Prabhupada, and now we'll see how they reacted. After the lecture, there were many questions. What is the symbolism of that object behind you on the stage? This was just a big frame for holding the painting, which never came. No. <laughs> and so one student asked, that object behind you, Prabhupada turned and beheld a bare U-shaped metal stand, compliments of the janitor for holding the painting of Krishna that never arrived. This, Prabhupada frowned, I do not know what this is. This must be some kind of technological symbol. And everyone laughed. No, that's not included here, but. Uh, and then, of course, there were some good questions. There were about 20 questions, 20 students asked questions. But here he's, uh, he's highlighting only the questions that annoyed Prabhupada, and we'll see why. No. Another student asked, why do you wear that marking on your forehead? No. Another one asked, why do you wear that necktie around your neck? No, which was a garland, you know, some. Huh? Uh, yeah, it may have been. But he says necktie. Necktie generally means something that's hanging. But anyway, whatever it was. Prabhupada napped back, annoyed with this question. The student sat down looking at his necktie. And Prabhupada explained to him, that questions about why people dress in a certain way are trivial, especially considering the gravity of the present subject matter. No. So sometimes Prabhupada, in, in giving an ordinary class, like we're giving class now, Prabhupada liked Joe devotees to ask questions because he felt like if, if you're listening and Prabhupada is explaining something very deep, then you will have some questions. Or sometimes devotees don't ask questions because of a hunkar. They think, if I ask the question, other devotees will think I don't know. No. <laughs> so sometimes, but, but then when someone would ask, just in the sake of asking a question, they would ask something not so intelligent. Prabhupada would say, that is not a good question. Also, if it wasn't related to the subject matter, Prabhupada would say, this is not this is not a good question. Because Prabhupada wanted the question to expand the subject matter, whatever is being spoken, that the question should be expanding more and more and more. Now here comes the good part. When the question and answer period ended, Satsurup stood and briefly addressed the students, inviting them to attend other college lectures by Srila Prabhupada or to come hear him at the temple. Wherever a saintly person goes, Satsurup said, becomes a tirtha or a holy place. And now for the month of May, Boston is a tirtha, so please take advantage. So they should have understood, here is a saintly person, here's Prabhupada, but they didn't, especially the professors. As Prabhupada was leaving with his disciples, 
a group of Indian faculty members and students came and stood around him, speaking rapidly, challenging him. One student, espousing the philosophy of monism, asserted that the highest expression of the absolute truth was that all is one. Prabhupada tried to make him understand that simply oneness was a rudiment rudimentary idea because from that one comes so, ma so many variegated manifestations. But the man would not accept defeat and Prabhupada became excited arguing with him, taking the man by the shirt collar. Oh. <laughs> Prabhupada shouted, you say everything is one, but this is, this, but is this cotton shirt the same as a cotton ball? Why don't you wear a cotton ball instead of this shirt? So Prabhupada. <laughs> then the Indian technologists surrounded Prabhupada, raising their voices and arguing, while Prabhupada's disciples looked on anxiously. Govinda Dasi warned the devotees about Prabhupada's health, and Ramananda and others smoldered at the offensive Indians. This wasn't the way to speak to a sadhu. Uh, one time, in earlier in 1966, when Srila Prabhupada had the first Vyasa Puja, the fir not first Vyasa, I'm sorry, first Jamastami, and on, on, the, on his Vyasa Puja day, which he didn't celebrate, he, devotees knew nothing about it. Actually, on the first Vyasa Puja day, it was interesting. It was in uh, Tokyo. Prabhupada said, now you will learn what is Vyas Puja. So Prabhupada said, at midday, you will bring an offering. And then you will have uh, <coughs> the Pushpa offering. So the devotees had no knowledge what is Pushpa, anything. But the only thing they had heard of was Pushpa rice. No, Prabhupada taught them. So they came at midday with this big pot of rice and put it before Prabhupada. No. He said, Prabhupada said, what is this? Prabhupada, you said Pushpa. No, Pushpa Puja. No, means you offer flowers. So Prabhupada said, sit down. He explained the whole process. They had no idea what to do. So Prabhupada explained, you do this, you bring garland, you know, you wash the lotus feet of the spiritual master, you know, offer artik and Pushpa Puja. And so the Prabhupada said, tomorrow we will do it again. No. And this time, so then the devotees got it pretty much, pretty well right. No. So Prabhupada, the point, I, I'm mentioning this because just like Prabhupada said, the painting is not so important. No. The ceremony, the important thing is transmission of transcendental knowledge. Divya gyan hride prakashito. No. This is what we sing every day. We just sang it. No. Giving transcendental knowledge. This is the most important thing, our Krishna consciousness movement. No. The deities are here. We must worship them beautifully, gorgeously. But the real purpose of this temple is to give knowledge. In 1976, I was there, and Prabhupada gave lecture, uh, and there were very few devotees. I was there, there was maybe only 20, 30 devotees, 30, 40 devotees for the class. So Prabhupada, you know, there were, there were hundreds of devotees. Prabhupada said, where are the devotees? And, and one devotee said, Prabhupada, they went on Parikram. And Prabhupada hit, hit the desk like, he said, I have made this temple so you can come and hear and chant. No. Why are you going on, uh, uh, Prabhupada didn't have nothing, he went on two parikrams at that time. He went with us. But Prabhupada was upset that they went without him. Just like Srila Prabhupada became famous before his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, because this was the last day that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was giving lecture in Vrindavan. And Prabhupada then some devotee announced that now we will have a big parikram. And almost everybody went on the parikram. But Prabhupada stayed. And uh, there's some other devotees, but Prabhupada also. So when it came time for Prabhupada's initiation, 
Saranga Goswami, he was introducing, here is, and Bhakti Siddhanta said, I know him, he likes to hear. And then Prabhupada gave Prabhupada first and second initiation. That was very rare that he would do that, very rare. First and second initiation, one, one time. And he was very happy. He knew who Prabhupada was from the very beginning. But um, Prabhupada, he wanted to show that, that this hearing, because everything in Krishna consciousness begins with hearing. If you don't hear, just like sometimes when we lead kirtan, then the devotees just chant whatever they're used to. It doesn't matter. You're supposed to hear, and whatever the person is leading, you, do, you sing that way. You don't sing, otherwise it's like, uh, you're like mindless robots, you know, just standing there and you wind, you wind your mind up. I, I will chant this, I do this every day just like this. But really I'm thinking about something else, I'm not hearing. You know. So whenever there's kirtan, we try to hear the person, how they're singing. There are so many different ways to chant uh, different melodies. And we, if we hear, of course, some of them are so complicated, it's difficult to follow. You know, some, some of these kirtan devotees, they, I don't know where they get them, but uh, difficult to follow. But our standard melodies, uh, we should be able to hear and chant. Very important. The Indian, oh, so, so Govinda Dasi, she was concerned because Prabhupada had just returned in December. That was like just four months before that, Prabhupada just returned from after having his heart attack. You know. So she was concerned. Prabhupada was getting very angry. You know. He grabbed this man. You know. And, uh, and so every time this argument would come about oneness, Prabhupada would get very, you know, energetically uh, disturbed and he would preach very strongly, especially if someone tried to continue with their Mayavad understanding. Meanwhile, a devotee reported that Prabhupada's car had broken down and someone ran out into the street to get a taxi. The arguing continued. When a taxi finally arrived, a few disciples pushed through the arguers, insisting, Swamiji, please, your taxi is waiting. It can't wait any longer. You have to go. And they disengaged their spiritual master from the mass of arguing technologists. Prabhupada considered the evening a success. So this is the spirit of a spiritual warrior like Srila Prabhupada. He doesn't, the important thing is you give the message of Krishna unchanged. You, know, you give it, you don't, we don't try to make it very nice. And we try to make it as nice as possible, but we don't change anything. And Prabhupada spoke very strongly in this lecture. You know, uh, because he could see they were puffed up. You know, and now we can see these people thinking, this Swami, he doesn't even have a university degree. I have a PhD. I'm a doctorate. Oh, so puffed up. Oh. And there were great scientists and uh, also Indologists, or say uh, Sanskrit professors that, that would come and hear from Prabhupada. One of them, uh, I remember, he, I met him in Los Angeles, and I spoke for a few minutes, and he said, the most amazing thing about Prabhupada, he called him Prabhupada. You know, he didn't, some, they said Swami, but he said Prabhupada. He was very impressed by Prabhupada. You know. uh, and he said that, I don't know how he remembers so many verses. You know. He said that. that he said, I've been studying Sanskrit for, I forget how many years, 30 years. And he said, I cannot recite so many shlokas. 
He said, Prabhupada is so special. And he was very touched, his heart was touched by Prabhupada. And another professor, Professor O'Connell, you know, he spoke about Prabhupada and he said that, uh, he said, one thing he said was, there are three persons in, in history, the, the greatest persons, I consider the greatest. One is Jesus Christ, another is Mahoma, and another is Prabhupada. <laughs> but he said, of the three, the greatest, who can give the greatest benefit to humanity is Prabhupada. Because all of his lectures are recorded. No. We don't even know what the others said or didn't say. We have, they have some scripture that's been changed and cha translated from one language to another. So who even knows what he said? But everything Prabhupada said. Prabhupada was so important that Krishna made the arrangement that everything is, is recorded. Not everything, but most important things that Prabhupada said are recorded. No. So this is Srila Prabhupada. But this professor one time, he was getting near his last days and he said, um, he said, actually, he said, Swami Prabhupada, he has brought this Gaudiya Vaishnavism. He said, I am not practicing Gaudiya Vaishnavism. He said, although I should be, because I am near the point of death. He said, I should surrender to Lord Chaitanya. And this is all coming from Prabhupada. He knew about Lord Chaitanya beforehand, but he considered Lord Chaitanya to be a saint that some people were calling him God. But after Prabhupada spoke to him so many times, he accepted that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. And he was thinking like that. I should actually, I should surrender. I should surrender to Prabhupada. He was thinking like that. Maybe in his mind, in his heart, he did. And uh, so this is, the, this is what we, we want to do. We want to transmit in our preaching Krishna consciousness into the heart of the persons. And how do you do that? Not by what you say, but by what you practice. When we practice Krishna consciousness very seriously, you know, and very every day we, we are diligently performing sadhana bhakti every day, you know, unless you get sick or something, but every day. And then when you speak to someone, it will enter their heart. Satam prasangam mama virya samvido bhavanti hrit karna rasayana kata. It goes into the ear and into the heart. But if it's just theoretical knowledge, it will just go into the ear and out the other one. No. It will just go pass through the brain, won't reach the heart. So we don't want to give, our devotees are not meant to give theoretical knowledge. Our devotees are meant to give pure Krishna consciousness. No. And if we do that, then like Srila Prabhupada did, we can see how he changed even big professors. No. But these puffed up professors, they couldn't understand Prabhupada. No, because they were too puffed up. No. So, therefore, Krishna says, Tadvidi pranipatena. You must be pranipatena. You must be submissive. You must open your mind, open your heart, so that Krishna can enter. Just like Srila Prabhupada, in his beautiful purport, uh, in the cleansing of the Gundicha temple, I think it's, I can't remember, like, verse, I can't remember the verse number. 112, 113, like that. It's such a long purport. And Prabhupada says, Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanam. He said that, that Lord Chaitanya is teaching us the process of hearing and chanting. And you hear and, and you chant until all of the finest particles of material contamination are cleansed outside of the heart. Just like Chaito Darpana Marjanam means cleansing out the gross contamination. And Baba Maha Dvagni Nirvapanam means you're going deeper 
into the, 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 the residue of karma that is waiting there. You're going, cleansing deeper. Then Shreya Kadiva Chandra Bhitaranam. Then the moonlight of Krishna's instructions can enter into your heart and Vidya Vadu Jivanam. And that transcendental knowledge will always stay with you because it's planted in your heart. So we have to, as Srila Prabhupada says, we have to uh, prepare our hearts so that Krishna can sit there. Pravishtakarna randrena svanam bhavam saroruham. That Shukadeva Pradiksha Maharaj, he said that this transcendental knowledge enters into the ear and opens up the lotus flower of our relationship with Krishna. And Krishna will be sitting there waiting for us to cleanse away every bit, every small particle of material contamination. Just like the autumn rains. You know, when, there, when there's monsoon rains, the water is very muddy, you know, very brown. But when the autumn rains come, then the water is very clear, gentle rains. So the gentle touch of the lotus feet of Krishna within our heart will cleanse away all the contamination. So we'll read just a little bit more. Some of the devotees had seen the poor attendance at Prabhupada's Boston University lecture, feared the same thing might happen at the Harvard School of Divinity. So they suggested Swamiji wait at his apartment while they went ahead to the lecture hall to see how many people would gather. When they saw a decent number gathering, one of them phoned Satsuru that Swamiji should come. Meanwhile, at the lecture hall, Joseph Matthews, a graduate student in Vaishnavism, addressed the audience, describing from the mundane academic viewpoint the history of the Chaitanya movement. So this is the difference. When Srila Prabhupada says, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of God, and we immediately believe it because that conviction is there. But when this student who's probably read more Chaitanya literature than many of us, but he couldn't understand anything, just explaining some superficial you know, aspects. Maybe some people in Bengal believe that Chaitanya is God. This is how they speak. You know. I've heard them. Prabhupada arriving, arri arriving half an hour later than scheduled, led the audience in Kirtan and began his talk. He praised the Harvard students as fortunate, citing that according to Vedic literature, aristocratic birth, good education, beauty, and wealth are the four chief material opulences especially at that time, anyone who went to Harvard was from a wealthy family. No. Now they, they accept poorer students, but only, be, only to increase their prestige, thinking, oh, just see, we're open to everyone. But how many poor, they only have a small, like 2% quota of poor students, and 98%, they pay big money. No. Compared to others in the world, he said, the students at Harvard have all these opulences. If, however, they could increase their good fortune by adding Krishna consciousness, then that would be their perfection. For example, gold is certainly very valuable, but if gold were to have a pleasant fragrance, then it would be even more valuable. Similarly, if these materially fortunate persons could add the spiritual fortune of Krishna consciousness to their life, then that life would be successful. After Prabhupada's talk, Mr. Matthews thanked him for his discour discourse on Hindu philosophy, but immediately Prabhupada interrupted. Actually, we are not Hindu, and Prabhupada explained the universality of Krishna consciousness. As the meeting broke, some interested students came forward for more discussion with Swamiji. One Sanskrit student asked, how can a brahmachari 
be expected to understand Gita Govinda since it deals in so many intricacies of man-woman relationships and love affairs? Srila Prabhupada replied, only a brahmachari can understand Gita Govinda <laughs> because it is not about mundane sexuality. It is the highest spiritual technology of Radha and Krishna. No. That means an advanced brahmachari. No. Prabhupada said, Gita Govinda is not for the ordinary persons. No. Um, one time a professor French professor. He said, Swamiji, please tell me about the, the, the prema relationships of Radha and Krishna. And Prabhupada said, who are you? And he said, I'm Professor so-and-so. And Prabhupada said, no, 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 who are you? He said, I'm Professor so-and-so. And then Prabhupada said, no, no, who are you? And the professor said, Maybe Swami doesn't understand my accent. And the devotee said, oh, he understands you very well. He is asking, who are you? Otherwise, you are not this body with a name and designation. And said, Prabhupada said, yes. First you understand you are not this body. Then we can speak about Radha Krishna. He said, if you, if you are in the bodily concept, we are not interested in Radha and Krishna. We are teaching you are not this body. And so the professor didn't know what to say and Prabhupada just spoke. So he would, Prabhupada was very expert at disarming people like this, Brahma, this, this student. Prabhupada was especially pleased about his Harvard lecture. The next morning, Satsvarup went to see him with a check for $125 from Harvard. So $125, that's like uh, about 10,000 rupees. Not such a big, but at that time, that was 10,000 rupees in 1968 also was very big amount of money. No. Big, big amount. That was very good meeting last night, Prabhupada said. It seemed to the devotees accompanying Prabhupada from one speaking engagement to, engagement to another that they were, they were the real audience, the ones to whom Prabhupada was speaking. It was for them that he had come to Boston, more than for 200 students who sat in the chapel at Northeastern until the bell rang, or the technologists in the lounge at MIT who left after the lecture for the movies and the bars. Prabhupada was setting the example of how to preach. It was for them, the ones who would have to carry on the mission in his absence. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. So if anyone has a question or comment, Hare Krishna Maharaj um, In earlier time, in initial days of ISKCON, uh, there was not much affluence and it would be very difficult to arrange uh, any resources. But today, in today's time, uh, it, we feel we are in Vekunta. Everything is arranged for us. So, would you like to please tell us how difficult it was? Because uh, for us today, we don't feel much uh, difficulties in getting or going to get any things. So we have become more complacent or <laughs> uh, slackened in preaching or in personal sadhana. So, so as to me uh, memorize us, how was the difficulty in initial days, so we can become more grateful for what we are getting. Every moment. <laughs> Every moment has its particular difficulties. No. Just like in the beginning days, there was no, of course I didn't come in the very beginning, but 
I got my first magazine in 1971. I didn't start seriously practicing until 1973. And you know, we were, most of us, uh, we were just going from one place to another opening temple. That was my service, you know, to open different places because there was no place in Latin America, there was no temple. It was just Mexico City, Buenos Aires in southern part, and Caracas, Venezuela. So we opened Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia, all these countries. So that's one aspect of Krishna consciousness. Uh, we should not think that it's any different. Just like uh, we may think when we hear about somebody doing in Satya Yuga doing 50,000 years of austerities, we think, oh, I could never do that. No. But for us, to chant the holy name without offenses is the, takes the same amount of effort in Kali Yuga as doing 50,000 years of austerity. If you can chant the holy name one time, just like Ajamyu, without offenses, you're practically back home, back to Godhead. No. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, just chant this holy name once. No. And you, will, otherwise you won't be able to stop. If you can chant one time without offenses, no. then the holy name will open up in your heart. So, uh, so I see, I see that, you know, yes, okay, there are thousands of people come here, no. But how many of those thousands of people understand? I see people with selfie, you know, the temple in the background, you know, and then they'll go home and show their picture, I was in the temple, and life a, a, as usual, you know. <laughs> so this is... Uh, you know, it, it, so we have that challenge. We have that challenge to to help people come off of the platform of superficiality. Just like in the West, the biggest challenge for people generally is to follow the four regulated principles. Now it's also becoming a little bit of a challenge in India in some places. But still, people are generally more pious. You know. Prabhupada says in 10.1, verse number 4 in the purport, Prabhupada says that in India, uh, India has been uh, the f f Vedant, Vedant, or I forget what he says exactly, the Vedic philosophy has become, you know, contaminated. But still, Prabhupada said, if, if you, everyone knows they are not this body. Everyone knows. And they may not practice it, but they know. And he, Prabhupada said, if you have a Pandal program, thousands of people will still come. And we see that. So our challenge now in India is to go help people go beyond that. Because if people are pious, uh, just like one time I was in Punjabi Bagh when it was just a little garage, you know, it was a house with a garage. So uh, Prabhupada in the purport was speaking about, uh, you know, sex life. And this lady says, oh, you know, I was taught only uh, I, I, I don't understand why Swamiji is saying these things. I am happily married. You know. and, <laughs> and then her husband turned to her and said, you know how difficult it is to follow. You know. she, you know. mm. yeah. And so, because he was actually listening very carefully. So we have to, in India, that's our challenge. We have to help people get, because they think I'm pious, I know this, I know Krishna. Just like one time I was on an airplane from Mangalore to Bangalore, and one man sat next to me and said, why are you dressed like this? I said, oh, well, I'm, from, I'm a sannyasi. Oh, well, what is, devotee of Krishna? Oh, Krishna, I know Krishna. I said, oh, yes. So you read Bhagavad Gita? No. I know Krishna, <laughs> but no Bhagavad Gita. No. So this is our challenge. Uh, and therefore the same thing applies. We have to become very Krishna conscious to help the people go over that obstacle of thinking I'm pious, I'm a Hindu, I'm vegetarian, I know, uh, I'm already there. No. 
I don't need to do any more. No. So everywhere has its challenge. And every time in Krishna consciousness will have its challenge. No. We just have to come up to the challenge, whatever it may be. No. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you rightly said in starting that Sila Popad was very simple. When, when I also hear his lectures, it seems that bhakti is very simple, very easy to do. And, but when we discuss or when we explain someone or we hear from others, it seems little complicated. Bhakti is very tough, complicated. But when we hear from Popad, it seems like it's like very easy. So. What is the secret here? What is the fact behind it? Well, bhakti is not complicated. The complication is in the mind. You know? But it is complex. And if you, s just like Srila Prabhupada was saying about this Gita Govinda, that he said, uh, a brahmachari can understand. This is not, has nothing to do with ma ma material. So therefore, Rupa Goswami explains in, in uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, you know, Ujvala Nilamani, all these, all the uh, science, a complex science, thousands and thousands and thousands of verses explaining the complexities of the science of bhakti, the intricacies, the technology of love. Because what is the use of uh, this electronic technology? It, 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 it came and it will go at some point. You know. And it's always uh, complicated and you no. Know. But everyone wants to love. So therefore Rupa Goswami has explained the most important technology of that one thing that everyone wants. You know, of course nowadays almost everyone wants a cell phone. But, you know. but then you know it's just a, a thing. But love is the most the deepest and most important thing in our hearts. And therefore we, we want to, we should, this is our challenge, understand the technology of love and be able to give that to others. So, but Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada would say, he's saying it from the external point of view. What is the difficulty of chanting? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. What's the difficulty? There's no difficulty, but it becomes difficult because we don't have the taste. You know. So the whole science of Krishna consciousness, what Rupa Goswami is teaching, what all of our acharyas are teaching, what Srila Prabhupada is teaching, is to acquire that taste. Prabhupada said, first you bring people, let them experience the happiness of chanting, and then you can explain the rules and regulations. Don't explain the rules and regulations first, otherwise they'll go away. You know, just like Prabhupada said, when I came to your country, I thought if I speak, then they will say, Swamiji, maybe you should go home. You know, because you know, it's very difficult to follow these principles. You know, so, uh, but actually, it's very, it's very, everything makes sense. And if we learn it properly, then Krishna consciousness makes so much sense. Therefore, so many people are becoming devotees. But we have to continue to advance. And what does it mean to advance? It's a very simple thing also, but it's a very complex thing because of our mind. You, your, your humility should become deeper. When you read the Shikshastikam prayers uh, and the purports, uh, the prayers and, and the purports by Srila Prabhupada in the 20th chapter of Antilila, you can see it's, it says that humility is increasing in Lord Chaitanya's heart, is increasing. He's teaching us that shikshastika means, that spiritual life means that this humility, this tolerance, this respect of everyone, and not wanting any recognition whatsoever for oneself, this has to become deeper and deeper and deeper. Not that we become proud. We think, when will they bring the ghee lamp to me? No. 
When will I be the first one to get the ghee lamp? Then my life is successful. No, not like that. We want to become dasa, 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 anudasa. No. Prabhupada said one time that success in Krishna consciousness means that you have so many layers above you. No. Layer after layer. First, if, if we would have come at the time of Rupa Goswami, we would have been unqualified to follow. But because we, there's Rupa Goswami, and then there's the other Goswamis, and then there is, you know, uh, Narutam Das Thakur, or uh, 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 Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Baladevi Jibhushan, you know, and all the way down to Srila Prabhupada. And now many devotees are becoming more advanced you know, in Krishna consciousness and teaching. And they will become, some have become gurus, others will become gurus, but they must be qualified. And the qualification is that these, those two verses, three and four, of Shikshastika are the qualification. There in the Shikshastika, everything else is progressive, a state of progressive humility, but those are the two instructions. And the, and the fifth verse, it prepares us for going into the deeper realms of bhakti where tears will be flowing from our eyes. Once I understand, I am a little atom at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I am a little atom at the lotus feet of my Guru Maharaj. Not that let me become the most prominent devotee. Let me see how many followers I can get. Let me see this, let me see that. Let me become proud of, you know, whatever I have. Uh, so these are the obstacles. That's what makes it difficult. The ahankar, ahankara vimudatma, thinking that I am making things happen. No, it is all Krishna's mercy. It is all, the three modes of nature are Krishna's mercy also. Because as they, as they uh, affect us, we learn to go beyond them. No. Uh, so, nam chayo vyabhicharena bhakti oriyanta sagunam samadita etam pamabhuyaya kalpate. Sagunan samatitayan. I must atitta, I must go beyond the modes of nature. And so, if we feel ourselves becoming proud or, you know, I want some recognition, then we know we're still under the modes of nature. That is the difficulty. Because the mind is identifying with something in this world. So we'll stop here. Thank you all very much for your kind attention. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita ki jai. Anantakoti Vaishnava Vindiki jai. Nitai Gaur Premanandi.